defect management process in software testing. We all know what the bug is. We all know what the error is. The bug is the consequence of the outcome of a coding fault. A bug could be a coding fault with a syntactical error. And what is the other type of error? One is syntax error. The other one is logical error. What is syntactical error? Syntax error. If you have any issues, you are not you have opened up a bracket, but you forgot to close the bracket, then that's a syntactical error. If you have if, if the programming language like Python requires you have to press a tab after you type the for loop in the in the very next line, you need to have eight space, then you will need to have those spaces if you don't give that it's a syntactical error what's are the what are the logical errors logical errors is the mistake in your logic you you put <clears throat> so if you are writing if else statement and if you write if you are if you are dealing with the problem of a range you need to put and operator but by mistake you put or operator that's the logical mistake that's a logical error if you need to put logical and you put logical or that's a uh, that's a logical error that's not a syntactical error syntactical syntactically your logic your your uh, syntax is okay but you did not choose the right operator that's your logical mistake. The place where you need to put in two for loops, you put one for loop. You have done it in data structure, you need two for loops sometimes to loop through a list, to write a quick sort, bubble sort, all those algorithms. And if you don't put that, you are dealing with the you are dealing with the logical error so a defect in a software is created because of all these logical errors there are two types of programming language one is called compiler based language the other one is called interpreter what is the difference between compiler and interpreter language? Very old question, but I still want to ask. Not required. There are two types of language. One is interpreter and one is compiler. Interpreter language reads the program line by line. Not too many programming languages are, le are left like that. Most of the programming languages are now compiler based languages. Interpreter are getting thing of the past. But what is interpreter language? They read the program line by line. Meaning that if you have 1000 line of code or something, and let's say your error exists on line number 900. Then your program will continue to run up to, up to uh, the line number 899. It will not complain about it. So it's a line by line interpreter, line by line manipulation. With compiler based language, like Java, C, C++, Python. All these languages are compiler-based languages. And what they do is they read the program all at once. 
regardless if there is 1000 line or there are 2000 line or 3000 line it reads the program all at once and run the program that way what happens if there is a syntax error in interpreter language you only come to know when you run the program and your program get stopped with an error at line number 899 because let's say if i have a 1000 line of program 900 lines are okay uh, at, you have an error at 900 line your program will run smoothly up until like 899 but with compiler it will not even let you run a single line of the code because it reads the program all at once and compile that so that is the difference between compiler based versus interpreter based language So the defects in the software is a variation of a software application from end user requirement or original business requirement. A software defect is an error in the coding which causes the incorrect or unexpected result from the software program which does not meet the actual requirement. So the defect could be left due to so many things now these days in, th in this day and age. A defect in the software is not probably due to the coding error, <clears throat> is not probably due to the interpreter error because as I said most of the languages are now compiler based languages. You will not be able to even publish if you have a website that is on interpreter because if you have coded on C++, C Sharp or Java or Python or any programming or even PHP, if you have coded the program on those programming languages, you're, you will not be even be able to run your program if you have an error because they are compiler based languages. But the underlying fact is that a software with the logical error in the coding which can co which cause incorrect or unexpected result from the software program so it's not the matter of that you forgot to miss out you forgot to put a bracket or close uh, did not put a semicolon or something like that it's a logical error in the program or the security error in the program can cause the bugs in your or defects in your program in your website in your software that you develop So it's an unexpected or incorrect result from the software program which does not meet the actual requirement. The tester might come across such defect while executing the test cases. So if, as I said, developers are developers. Developers, when they are testing, they are, they are doing only a minimal testing before, before they publish the, web, uh, the website or the program to the uh, to the UAT department they are just only doing minimum test cases okay first name is first name last name is not last name but they might forget to put the phone number or email address interchangeably they might do that so there the and the test will still pass because they haven't tested rigorously <clears throat> so then you might come across the defects so that is why each time you have a software, you have a different version or different updates coming out to keep improving the software. So when the tester execute the test cases, they might come across such test results which are contradictory to the expected result. This variation in the test is referred to as software defects. So these defects or variations are referred by different names in organizations like issues, problems, bugs, or incident. So when the issue is reported, when the problem is reported, the tester of the software reports the problem back to the developer and say that when I was testing your program, I saw these, these, these errors. 
your expected output is this but the actual output that i am seeing is not correct so you have to fix it not necessarily all the time is that tester is wrong uh, is right 90 99% of the time testers are right because they have as i said they have some business logic as well because they they are the tester they will be providing the feedback that i tested all these test cases and based on the business logic and the business rules that business require me to test all these tests are okay except these these test tests which i am returning back to the developer and he can fix it so some some bugs are urgent to be fixed and some that you can even proceed with it but nine but you don't want to publish a final website with with the bug if you have a known bug that need fixing it has to be fixed no matter what before, even, whether if it's a small or a large because at the end when the user is using that website at the comfort of their home they don't know whether all the bugs are fixed or not they are there just to use your website and you don't want to be leave any stone unturned and publish the website and say that we'll fix it later if you know it fix it before you publish it now the issue with that is that you have some project timeline to meet you have some project tasks to complete intermediate tasks to complete these issues problems bugs and incident can delay the deliverable of the project the timeline the gantt chart of the project you committed that you will be uh, as a developer you are finished by this day problem with this these issues let's say you committed at the end of the month <clears throat> that this will be finished today is may 9th you you finished it by let's say may 15th you tested and you said okay i tested at my end whatever i think but the test cases that you have versus the test cases that uat department tester has has lot more differences he might take two or three days and one or two days of his vacation or whatever he comes back at the at the date 20th and say that hey you still have some issues that i found then the, then it is thrown back at you on 22nd and 23rd you fix it in 3 or 4 days then you send it back to the uat department so it's a back and forth that is happening between you and between the developer and the uat department and the timeline you committed was the end of the month and there you go the month is ended now you are you are missing the deadlines and that's not good as a software developer they will say that okay this developer missed the dread deadline how we can fix that so there is a gap how we will fix that what do you think how how do you think <clears throat> this can be fixed where is the gap can be fixed this has happened to me personally what do you think how the how these cases can be fixed you can only do so much testing as a developer the actual test cases are with the uat department one solution is if the test cases are not that many give all the test cases to the developer so that he can test it beforehand in his environment 
before giving it to the testing department. And these are the actual errors. These are the actual issues that you might face in your job. Because you don't know all the test cases, what they are testing it with. If there are limited number of test cases that you can test, 5, 10, 15, that's okay. Then you can publish it to them. But there, if there are thousands of cases, then you need to put the timeline of completing the task more than expected. Maybe 20, 30, 20 days when you are giving that the, I will be finishing by May, May 5th. Don't give it May 5th. Maybe give June 15th. So then you have a little bit of pool to work with. And don't be shy in that, that it will look bad on you that you are doing that well. You have to do a complete testing. If you have a have lot more, more test cases, then if there is the back and forth that has to happen between you and the uh, UAT department, let that happen. But don't make it look bad on you that you missed the deadline. You at least have some pool to work with because it looks bad on you when you are not doing your job and say that tester comes back to you and it looks frustrating with your manager saying that, oh, it has came back again from UAT department. Well, you don't have all the test cases with you. So how can you tell? Sometimes you have, as a developer, you don't have the full business knowledge. You are just a developer. You are just developing a web page and you are not, your, your brain is not designed sometimes to deal in a business fashion, unless you are a business manager or something, or you are up in the position with all the corporate trainings <clears throat> that you require to have a business knowledge, you are just a entry level or a medium level or a senior developer, senior to junior to senior developer who has some knowledge of the business or who you, you don't have some knowledge of the business. So there is a, there is a gap right when you enter in the company, <clears throat> you will be trained of what are the business logics? What are the things that you need? But out of five, you might remember three. You will not be able to remember all the business logics. You might have to go back and look at your notes, your documents, that these are the logics that I need to put in, but you might miss out on one or two. So in that case, you need to know your timelines that if you are giving the timeline, make sure you are giving ample timelines so that you can fix your issues. So not only it has to look good, Visually, graphically, if I'm talking about a website, aesthetic of the websites, but also bug free. So the, you have a lot on your plate, a lot on your hand. You are developing and you are keeping the aesthetics of the web page as well. And that's what you have test cases that you can potentially miss out. So detecting the software, detect the bugs in the software. <clears throat> Plus you have to write the document as I, I, I'm going to tell you that you have to write in a bigger environment. So you have to write a document so that you can move your website from the development environment to the UAT environment. So the UAT can start testing the software in their environment as well with their data. So when the tester, the, so okay, let uh, let me complete this. Okay, so these two terms have thin line of difference in the industry. Both are faults that need to be fixed, and so interchangeably used to buy some of the testing, some of the testing team.
when the tester execute the test cases the they might come across such test result which are contradictory to results and this is what i'm trying to tell you this is the variation in the test result is referred to as software defect so they will refer, refer it to in their document that there is a defect in the software well it is coming up because you did not know all the test case scenarios these defects or variations are referred by different names in different organizations like issues problems bugs or incidents so issues need to be fixed no matter what you call it issues problem bugs or incident so recommendation is if if tester comes back and say to you the website is lo website looks good except it has couple of issues create or open the ticket for it create and open a new task for it project not just keep the same task because if you don't add the new task if you find the issue in the website i don't know that business logic or i knew that business logic but this was missed out so let's create a new ticket so if you create a new ticket you will or a new incident or a new ticket number you have a proof that these are the new discoveries that are made after the fact and you need some extra time to fix those issues because you give the timeline at the end of the may or at the end of the month and you don't have enough time you need extra week or two to do this and don't take a burden of it that you have to do it in a week take extra time make a case for it yes that now as if i am reading it i am finding the issues and i i will i will i will cater these issues but i need extra time maybe extra two weeks not just one week because sometimes <clears throat> fixing the bug as is as easy as as adding one if else statement or one switch case statement on were one extra for loop one extra logic but sometimes it could be more drastic you will have to type you may might have to change the almost 50 to 60% of the code then you will have to uh, you will have you will need extra time then if you missed out on a field that is a, that is a required field you did not put that field on the form or on the web page it could be just adding a one more field and adding one more uh, uh, <clears throat> insert to the insert statement or something like that easy fix but sometimes the whole logic of the program has to be changed so you need some time to read it you are not if the program comes back to you in the development environment you might need some time to think about it how you'll going to fix it this is the journal idea of a report in an excel sheet you might get this or you might get this in a in a in the form of a ticket number that this is the defect id defect id defect id number 1 for example or defect id number 2 or defect id number 5 defect description meaning that this is what was expected but this was not found or this was uh this was input from the tester and the defect was found when you moved on to the next page what is the current version of application so meaning that if you have five or six different versions to go back it means that this issue was present in that version so let's say in the erp system or in the 
management information system i will call it erp system in the erp system timeline you keep developing you keep adding the modules based on the existing module you will keep developing the new modules or new new portals <clears throat> you might have a situation and i'm talking about versions now you might have a situation that this problem that you are looking at is there forever since the inception of this software when we started making this software this problem is there since its inception such and such defect that we are talking or you change some logic couple of versions back this problem wasn't was not there but you change some logic in the programming code now the you fixed one issue but you actually created another issue which was overlooked or was not tested it was coincidentally tested by the tester when he was doing the manual testing not automated automation testing he found that that issue and then it reported back now that's a problem so you might need to go back where in the code version that you find that this was not there and now it is happening so you as a software developer you might have multiple copies of the project that you have worked on in the past where do you keep your copies you usually keep keep your copies in the github or on the drive that you have or 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 on your personal portion of the network drive that you keep in so you go back and let's so you deploy the older version and the development environment and see if this error was there before if this error was there it means it persisted if you think of it when i made this change or made i made such and such change based on the request i made this change in the code maybe that has triggered this error that they are seeing now so it wasn't there so you might have to go back couple of step couple of versions and see if this error came just recently or was it there since since uh, we started writing the code for this for this whole erp system so if it is there forever then you might have to change the logic depending upon the complexity of the logic you might take you might have to just change the logic couple of versions back or you have to rectify it from the beginning and it could be a big or a small change so the steps which cause this error to happen so this will be a good details that you can give back or feedback to the custom uh, to the developer so that when he gets this error details back the defect id the description the versions the steps which lead you as a tester that when the developer get it back he should be able to regenerate or reproduce the same error at his hand at uh, at his and so that he can fix the issue if he does not able to recreate the issue how can he fix it if it is only happening in the uat environment if it is ha only happening in the test environment and not happening in the developer environment then what you can say it's the it's the difference between the two environment the structure the data structure between the two environment the table structure in the two environments might be different that is why it is happening so you might be asking why there is a difference between the table schema or table structure between the two environments they should be always be equal if you have a kimte database that we look at that we have it in the developer environment and if i move that from developer environment to the test environment those two environments should be equal regardless the data could be different the data number of rows could be different 
but the behavior should be equal, uh, the schema or the structure should be the same my question to you guys will be how would you create so you i've i've always talked about the development environment the uat environment or the test environment and the live production environment which is the live environment my question to you would be how would you create a development environment and the test environment should be a very easy answer but i would like you to answer that in the chat window yeah could be what else if i ask you that i have a live production environment and i need development environment to reflect what is in the production environment and i need what is in the production environment to reflect in the test environment so all the three environments are equal the more closer all these three environments are the more we are closer to our actual production environment and we should be able to fix the errors so how we can replicate the environments so <clears throat> how we would go about and do that it's a one line answer don't be hesitant you can give me the answer on a vm that's a good one that's close but how how would you go about and do that yeah is in a sandbox environment so usually okay let me tell you how this can happen and this usually is the practice is that you usually what you do usually the database administrator what they do is that they take the backup of the actual live or production environment and they copy and replace and replace the whole environment on one day of a given month or after 3 months or 2 3 months whatever is the live production is the live production environment people are coming there people are entering the data people are entering the claims we are people are entering their transaction people are entering everything they are buying yeah they are placing the order live environment is the live environment but if you want to replicate your live environment to your development environment and your uat environment one day of a month or one day of a two months or three months your database administrator will take the copy of your database from the live environment and dump it into the development environment so all of the database data along with the schema will be placed on the development environment so you have exactly say, almost same data as that so let's say on the 10th of the month i said that i am a database administrator i i put out the notice that what i am going to do i am going to take out all the data from the data uh, from the live environment and i will take a backup of the live environment and i will dump it into the development environment so you will have the latest and greatest data in the development environment on the 15th of the month i will 
send out the notice to the testing department or a UAT department that on 16th of this month, I'm going to take. So I have done it already in the development environment. I'm going to do the same. I'm going to do the same. I will copy the data from the live environment and paste it under the or copy and store it under the development uh, under the UAT environment. So what will happen? With a little bit of difference between the five days or six days of transaction, your development data might have a little bit less and your test data might have a little bit more, but data wise, they might have some more rows and some more some plus or minus rows, but you will have a copy of your live production environment in dev and in the test, right? So this is how network ad, uh, database administrators copy the data from one environment to another environment. So data wise, the rows can be 1000 in the development environment, 1500 in the test environment. Data wise, rows can be plus and minus. Schema wise, this should be identical. Schema wise, they should be identical. Structure wise, they should be identical because every table change that you are doing in the DAV is moving to the test environment. And then from the testing environment, it is going to the live production environment. And when you are taking the data, from the production environment and dumping it back to the, because you want more data in the development and test or up, most up to date data in development and test, your actual schema of the table always moved from development to test to the live, right? When you started writing the project and when you started writing the ERP system for the company, how did you started writing? You created something in the development environment you gave it to the tester, tester approved it, then it made it to the live environment. Everybody started to enter the data from, from by coming onto your website, by subscribing it, by creating account, by creating an Amazon account and everything is there. Then what Amazon database administrator did, now we have collected 10,000 or 20,000 people worth of data. Let's copy this data and put it to the development environment. So we have a lot more data to work with. We have a lot more test cases to work with or deal with. So now you have development environment that has a lot more data when you, when you even started working on it. But in the first instance, how the data moved, how the data moved or the, how the schema moved, you created the table. That table moved to UAT and that table moved to production. Now you will take the copy of the production and dump it to the development environment. So your schema should not change when you copy from production to the, if, if, if you see a schema difference or if there's more field or less field, then there's a problem. There is a definitely a serious problem because expectation was that nobody is going to add or remove the field in the production environment without having a full process that developer will change the schema, UAT will accept that ch change schema and then it will be moved to the production environment. That is why I am calling this uh, as a serious part. If the, there's, a data, uh, there's a data difference, that's okay. Schema difference is not acceptable. Schema should be same because uh, there is a process to make even a small change and the reason I'm saying is that nobody should go in the production environment and make or add a field or remove a field because what can happen if you have added a field that is a mandatory field in the production environment. And if somebody gone on and create gone on and try to enter the record and the mandatory field is not entered, what can happen when they will click on the submit button, the live production environment can crash because you did not enter the mandatory field. So it, there has to be a process that you do one small change 
that small change has to be moved to test. Tester will test that and then move it. So if somebody says that, can you add one more field to it? Okay, we will not do it directly in production environment. That field has to be added first in the test. Tester has to test it. And then that field has to be moved into the production environment. And the, when the production will run, when the people will save, they will not get any error. But if you do some changes, which could be a farmer attitude, that if you say that, oh, let's just do it in the production environment, we'll deal with the test environment and the dev environment afterwards. That's not going to work because you end up with, you do, if you leave it, if you do, let, let them do it one time, you will probably do let them do it five times in the future. And then your environments will not be identical and it will be difficult for you to identify where the problem is happening. But if you have gone through a process of dev, test, and production, then you are in sanity all the time. So your dev is always your red light. Your test is always your yellow light. And your green light is your traffic signal just like a traffic signal, and your green light is your production light. You will not start with the green, red, and yellow. You always start with red, yellow, green, right? Keep it that way. Make a change in the dev, make that change in the test, then make that change in the production environment. Don't make direct changes in the production environment because you can either jeopardize the data or you can have a lot more issues. And sometimes people do that. They make change. Oh, it's a, it's a minor change. Just do it. Or we are just adding a one column here. Don't worry. Or we are changing the data type of a column from wire to integer or integer to wire car or whatever. Making these changes could be catastrophic because if we change a data type of a field in the production environment from integer to a wire car, what could potentially happen? The inserted statement for inserting the record in the in the integer does not require a single code. But when you are inserting a wire car field, you need a single code, right? If you make that small change without knowing the impact, and if you change the data type of a field in the production environment, your insert statement is when person will click the submit button and behind the submit button, there is an insert query written. The data type is changed. SQL will not accept that and SQL will crash and the page will not work. And this usually happens. Reference means what, what date this issue was raised and found, found where you where in your provide reference to documents like requirement document design or may screenshot of the error to help understand the defect as much information that you can give to the developer that why this happened what was the reference of it you can give that detected by status if it's a uh, it, if it is if it has passed, you can give the status P. If it has failed, then you can give the status F. Or if it is a warning, then you can give the status W or something. Fixed by. If it is not fixed, leave this blank. When the developer fix it, he will sign it that it was fixed. And when it will be given, the tester will test it again. And he, will, he or she will say that I have seen that it was fixed by this developer now i'm going to check it how much is the severity of changing that one column priority whether it's a high priority or if it is a low priority it can wait for a few months if developer is working on a high priority task can this task can wait to be fixed if it is a not if it is not a screen or a 
web page which people are not using that much can this one wait until we are working because you might have a small team so you can prioritize and say this can this can wait it's a low priority but if it's a high priority or medium priority you might have to you might be working on one project and somebody comes back to you you might be working on two or three projects at the same time and somebody comes back to you that this has to be fixed you have to drop off the other project that you are working and have to fix this issue for first so might be working on your day might look like that you might be working half a day on a project and half a day on another project or fixing the bug of the previous uh uh project that you move to uat so if you send something to uat you might not be just sitting like hand finger, fingers crossed and hoping that testing will pass and nobody will come back to you you will be working the next half of a day taking some training or you will be working on something about uh another task or another set of project and then after lunch you will get back you will be you will be thrown back the error that hey the previous project that you just sent to the testing environment has this this issue can you please fix it so you have to drop the current project and then you will have to fix the previous project that you were working before lunch time so your day can become really hard on that so you have to look at the priority the number of tasks that you are handling and keep a pool for yourself that if you are working on two projects or three projects how you can accommodate if the change comes back to you and it happens and this is a difficult uh, difficult situation you might hear and that's why i was saying that making a small change has to be a, has to be a process and there has to be every single time there is a change that you are making you have to write a technical document change that this is a small change or a big change that i am making in it there is a technical document there is a there is a document to it so that if somebody point finger why did you make this change you can always say that this was requested in this ticket number i am making this change according to this ticket number if somebody wants to go and read the detail about that ticket number go ahead and read the detail about that ticket number the description the priority the intensity the severity and everything who requested it some sometimes business might have requested it that we need this change so you can say that i did not initiate it this was usually it was it is always requested by business sometimes if the tester or the developer find the issue they will instantiate a new ticket for that but you have to have a backing of a ticket nobody should just say that send you an email and hey kishan can you fix this for me well i fix this for you but let me create the ticket number so you have a ticket number to get back to it so you cannot just searching through your thousands of email 6 months down the road and find out oh somebody asked me this and i did, i forgot to create the ticket number for it if you have a ticket number for it you can always refer that okay now i i i have a ticket number i can i have something on my side to prove that i have a history or a log of who requested it and why it was requested uh, so this is just a template of a typical conversation between the the uh, test manager who is handling the tester and the developer usually testing department will not come to you directly this shows a test manager talking to the developer directly they usually talk to the your manager or send it out the email ccing you and your manager so you you don't have to deal with the people directly and have a high intensity conversation but at least you can say that there were 61 defects but uh, for fix but we found another 10 so the tester says so it's a conversation that can we fix 61 but they found another 10 which will be make it 71 so this can happen in a normal scenario so this is the defect management life cycle 
you start with the discovery you categorize that what kind of error it is developer says that it is resolved they verify it and tester also verified it then you have a closure for it and then you have a reporting for it so that you have a log for it that's why i say everything has to have a log whether you can find it in the defects report whether you will find it in the technical document for each ticket that you create so that is why there are softwares like remedy ticketing system <laughs> where you can create a new ticket for a new issues that you have found and type or create every ticket then you can create all the all those test cases in the excel file that's fine you can attach that excel excel file in in this ticket number that these are the bugs that needs to be fixed this is the ticketing system jira ticketing system this is also another system where you can create the tickets for the developers to work on so these are the ticketing systems being used in the real environment remedy jira i think there is one more um i have to look at but every change has to be approved by the managers of the department or the owners of the database so if i own this project this project is the, i am the stakeholder of this project before making change to that project make sure everybody on that database sign it off that okay i approve this change has it been tested yes has it been tested by the developer yes no if it is going to the production environment what day and time it will be going to the production environment there will be a set day and time when the you cannot just do it in the middle of the day and say that i'm going to add this to the middle of the day uh, in the production environment in the environment you have to choose a date and time at which end does it does it require a system reboot does it require system to be down temporarily shut down for 15 20 minutes during the lunch time or what time we can do it you have to schedule your you have to make it schedule if you are making it to the production you cannot just simply double click on it and say that oh we made it to the production environment at our home computer we take a luxury of doing and installing things and uninstalling things and deleting tables and creating tables adding a field removing a field we cannot take that luxury to the business environment <coughs> so i have given you a brief um, a very good feedback of about everything that how are this process is handled we usually never think about it when we are in the student life we are always developing it we are making changes because our colleague is sitting next to us we are making a peer programming we are developing and discussing what do you think and you make that change let's delete this column let's add this column let's do this that's fine when you are working in the school project but in the business environment it does not happen like you have different environments it has to be approved it goes through a goes through a process there has to be a process and you will hear that a lot i'll take take care uh, let's take uh, meet at 10:30